We have three different phones here. This is a Grand Stream 1200. Grand Stream 1200 is an entry to mid-level SIP phone that is part of our Connect program. The Object World Connect program is essentially an interoperability program designed to make sure that particular devices work as we expect them to. There's rigorous testing done all the time on new firmware revisions, and Grandstream telephones are part of this program. When you plug a Grandstream phone into the network, it will be automatically detected by UC server. This means that you don't have to go and find the IP address and make sure you can pair everything up together properly. It's all done automatically. The phone shows up in the user interface. When the phone's there, you can assign an identity to it. It automatically configures, it automatically reboots, and comes up and it functions automatically. No manual intervention is required at the phone or using the web UI or editing configuration files. The second phone that we have here that's part of the Connect program is a Polycom phone. Polycom has a, an extensive list of different phones that we support. Their Soundpoint IP line, is the full line of support of those types of phones. They have entry-level phones ranging through mid- and executive-level telephones, as well as some conference phones called SoundStation. Polycom phones are at the higher uh, quality spectrum. They have an HD voice capability, which, uh, which allows the phone calls to be transmitted at a higher codec, which makes the quality look slightly better. And all Polycom phones are Connect Plus as well. So when they're plugged into the network, they're automatically detected and configurable by UC server. All right, so this step is finished. This is the network integration step. The next step here is the communication system step. This is where we're going to set up the communication system. If this were a standard edition deployment, legacy PBX, we would pick the generic PBX by gateway selection. This is because we use a gateway, dialogic media gateway, to interface to legacy PBXs. In this case, we're going to be setting up UC Server, as this is a fully functioning SIP solution, standalone SIP solution. There's no external PBX required. So I'm going to put the voicemail number as 500. I'm going to select the network adapter that we're using for communication on the network. And uh, we're going to allow UC Server to configure the firewall for us so that traffic can move in and out of the server without being blocked by the Windows firewall. The last phone I'm going to set up here is the SNOM 320. SNOM 320 is a mid-level phone. SNOM has a range of phones and also belongs, all of them, which all of them belong to the Object World Connect program. The SNOM phones uh, range from the entry level 300. The 320 is a mid-level phone. And the executive level phone is the 360 and the 370. All the SNOM phones support a feature called call recording. There's a button on the phone here. If you press record with a, uh, with a few configuration changes on UC server, the phone calls will be recorded and those recordings will be deposited as voice messages into the user's mailbox. Polycom supports this functionality as well in the same way, or with the 650 in particular, you can stick a USB key in the back and use Polycom's call recording functionality directly on the phone. I notice I haven't plugged any of the phones in yet. Uh, this is because we have still have to enable support for those phones and then associate them, them with users, in which we're going to be doing in the next few steps. The phone type, phone type step is where we enable support for particular phone or phone families. This doesn't mean that we're going to be configuring the phones in this step. It means that UC Server will know what to do when phones are plugged into the network. We don't want to have nest, uh, configuration files cluttering up the TFTP and FTP server if they don't need to be there. This is why we have this step to enable support for those families. So we're going to enable the Grandstream, Polycom, and the SNOM families for support in this particular deployment. And all these steps are just configuring and uh, just describing what we're going to be doing with the DHCP, what needs to be done with the DHCP server as far as options are concerned, what accounts need to be created on the server in order for phones to be able to access the, uh, the FTP server in the case of Polycom, and copying all the required configuration files to those specific locations. Now that that's done, if we were to plug a phone in right now, it would be automatically detected by UC server and in the user interface, we could go in and assign an identity to it if there was one, which we haven't set up yet, so we're, that's why we're still not connecting the phones at this point. Here's where we set up a gateway. 
We have rigorous interoperability testing, as I mentioned before, and we do the same thing for the, for the gateways. Now, SIP PSTN gateways fall into that category, as well as the SIP ALGs. Uh, as far as SIP, uh, SIP PSTN gateways are concerned, we do interoperability testing with uh, Vega, Paul, uh, Audio Codes, Quintum, and Mediatrix. These are all Connect partners, which means we do certify that they work. They're not plug and play like the SIP phones, but we do have integration guides that describe exactly how to set up those gateways so that they function correctly with UC Server. We're going to set up a PSTN gateway, a SIP PSTN gateway, and here we give it the IP address. So the IP address of the SIP PSTN gateway is 0 0.50. In this case, the SIP PSTN gateway is a Vega stream. And the gateway description is a PSTN gateway. And that's all we have to do on the UC server side. At this point, once the configuration of the server is complete, we would go over to the Vega stream, follow the integration guide, set it up, and then that portion of the system will be working. The next step is messaging systems. Messaging systems step is where we define the message store or the message stores that we're going to be using to deliver messages to, for users. We do support multiple simultaneous message stores. So you could have an exchange server running with an IMAP server and Domino, all these different message stores, different users can have different message stores. In this case, we're going to select only Exchange, and notice that that server was detected automatically by UC Server. It doesn't matter, as long as it's in the, in the same domain, we will detect all the Exchange servers. Uh, we also support integrations with IMAP servers like Google, uh, Gmail or GroupWise, Domino Server uh, for Lotus Notes integrations, and SMTP servers, generic SMTP servers. So having picked Exchange, it's gone in Active Directory and pulled the information about the Exchange server, the name, the mailbox name, and also provides an option for us to enable Exchange UM. So if you didn't want to use the Object World uh, UC Server voicemail system, you could opt to use Microsoft's Exchange UM instead. In this case, we're not going to use that, but we are going to enable mailbox monitoring. What this allows us to do is to make sure that message waiting lights are toggled properly regardless of the, the device that you're using to listen to your messages, whether it's using Outlook or the web, Outlook web UI from your home or from your BlackBerry. Listening to, to voice and fax messages, using those devices and having a, a mailbox monitoring enabled will ensure that the message waiting lights are toggled properly. So during this step, we're setting permissions on the Exchange Message Store and configuring that system. What we also have on this desk here is a barcode scanner. This is going to come in handy in the next step when we're going to actually be associating different phones with the users in Active Directory. The barcode scanner reads the MAC address, is, is uh, used to read the MAC address from the back of the phone. This will allow for a less error-prone method of collecting that information and associating it with different users, and I'll show you how that works in one, 